Hi, I'm Jim Serace. This is Spiritual Sunday. I'm kind of a movie guy. I gotta confess, I like to watch movies, but movies that have meaning, have impact. So mostly I like movies that were uh, true. One of the movies that probably had more impact upon me than any other movie was a movie called Schindler's List. Schindler's List was about a fella by the name of Oscar Schindler, who was um, somewhat of an entrepreneur that lived in uh, uh, Germany, Nazi Germany, during the time of World War II. Oscar Schindler really wasn't interested in the politics of it all, um, or uh, in uh, the Nazis or uh, their directions or philosophies, but he was out to make money. So, when Germany was in full-scale war, uh, obviously um, something of need, it's all about supply and demand, that Oscar Schindler surmised was that, well, the German army would need munitions. So he started a munitions factory. And he uh, established relationships with the top Nazis in Germany at that time so that uh, he could sell them his munitions <clears throat> to help them in their um, efforts, albeit evil efforts. And uh, so, anyway, so he established these relationships, but he had one issue. He had no workers for his plant because all the young men and women were off and about in war. There was no one to work in his plant. So he came up with an idea that, you know, the Germans at that time, they were imprisoning the Jews, and they were putting them in concentration camps. And so Oscar Schindler thought that, well, here's my workers. So he approached the Nazi leadership at that time and uh, made a deal with them that he would give them certain sums of money for each worker that they could provide him from the concentration camps. The Jews were uh, actually happy to go and work in the plant because that meant a release from what was almost certain death. For in the concentration camps, that's where the Germans killed over six million Jews in the gas chambers, etc. So Oscar Schindler would go to the uh, leadership and he would give them some some money and then they would release workers for his plant. It was all about money. It was all about greed to Oscar Schindler. He didn't care much for the Germans, the Nazis at that time, or the Jews. But somewhere in the midst of getting to know and establishing relationships <coughs> excuse me, with his workers, his whole mission shifted because he fell in love with the people as he got to know them. And so in getting to know the Jewish people, he established a relationship. And as I said, had a love for them. And all of a sudden, somewhere in the midst of his life, his mission changed. It changed from making money to saving people. And so he would go to the Germans and he would give them more and more money for more and more workers, even to the point that he had no jobs for them. He just knew that the money that he paid them saved their lives. And he bought more and more and more and there was no work and so he wasn't making money because he was paying this money for workers who weren't really working but it was saving lives and he saved many well it came a time um, at the um, end of the war the war ended and he was going to then release all the workers uh, from his plant to, to, to be free and, you know, his heart changed so much that, you know, he even started making munitions that were faulty towards the end. But when the war ended and he was releasing all the Jews that he saved, um, and this is the part that really impacted me at the end of the movie. And if you haven't seen Schindler's List, you need to see it. So the Jews were so grateful to Oscar Schindler for what he did for them and the love that he shared with them. They didn't know what to give him on their way out to freedom. So they actually pried the gold from their teeth, their fillings, and they molted and melted the gold and molded a gold ring for Oscar Schindler. And on their way out, they presented Oscar Schindler with this ring for their gratefulness for saving 
their lives. And Oscar Schindler, when he received this ring, and at the end of the movie, it overwhelmed him. He, he, he was just undone. And he just started crying, and he fell to his knees. Because although he did many, many good things, he all of a sudden had an epiphany, a revelation of how much more he could have done. And he cried out, and he said, you know, I, I, I could have sold this coat, and how many more could I have bought with my, with my coat, or this lapel pin, this gold lapel pin, or my car? I could have sold my car, and how many more were that bought? Two, three, four, five, and he was just bawling at the end of this time, at the, at the end of the movie. And that impacted me because it gave me a realization that, you know, I may do a lot of good things, but how many more good things could I have done that perhaps I might leave on the table of my life? The Bible says that when we die and we face Jesus, that Jesus will wipe every tear from our eyes. I'm just wondering at that moment if those tears are tears of getting a vision of our life and seeing the things in our life that we thought were so important, but now we see how unimportant they really are, or the things we just cast aside in our life and, you know, that we thought was unimportant, but really how important they were. How many things we could have done that we didn't do. There's a song, uh, you know, Frank Sinatra is one of my uh, favorite singers, and I mean, who doesn't like Frank Sinatra, right? Of course, I'm probably talking to a lot of millennials, and so <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, um, he has a song, um, it's called I Did It My Way. And uh, I have the verses up here on my computer screen, and the first couple of verses says, and now the end is near. In fact, I was just at a wedding, um, Coach Gig's wedding, and they played this song. And um, anyway, so uh, good wedding, by the way, uh, fun. Anyway, so it says, and now the end is near. And so I face the final curtain, kind of what I'm talking about here. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway. But more, much more than this, I did it my way. Now, here's the thing. When that song comes on the radio, I kind of sing with it, but I change the words. Because instead of saying, I did it my way, I say, I did it thy way. Because for me, the things that um, I think are so myopic and so limited, but the things I know that my God thinks and desires for me are so much greater. So I try to align myself with his heart, his passion, his vision, because I know in that way, I'll have much less regrets. And the next couple of verses of the song, I did it my way, say, regrets, I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do, and I saw it through without exemption. I planned each chartered course, each careful step along the byway, and more, much more than this, I did it, change the word, I did it thy way. My challenge to you today is to seek God's wisdom and truth in your life. Ask God for the things that are important to him. Because as I said, sometimes we see things so much based upon our own selfishness. We see about this far in life. Ask God to give you vision of what's important to his heart. So then I will know, for me and for you, at the end of our days, there will be a lot fewer tears that the Lord will need to wipe from our eyes. Seek what's important. Seek to serve others as best and as much as you can. God bless you, keep you. May his face shine upon you. May you walk under the umbrella of his favor. In Jesus' name. Subscribe today at simonarius.net.